Hello everyone. Welcome to Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and more. We're into February, so a new prompt. Um, last month's prompt was words and I hope everybody enjoyed it. I certainly had a great time with words. I could have carried on and on and on. I've still got ideas buzzing in my head. But this month's prompt is recycle, reuse and repurpose. I know that many of us and I've seen so many comments recently in Facebook groups and you know on YouTube channels of people sort of really having it as their new year's mission to try and use up some of their their scraps that they've accumulated pieces of painty kitchen towel you know p leftover pieces where you've stamped on on deli wrap um painty baby wipes you all know that i hold on to the spiral bound edges of um my, my notepads these are some circles left over from when I was doing the, the bleeding tissue paper. I've got die cut cutouts, you know, painty papers galore. You name it, I've got it. Um, security envelopes. I mean, these are just the inside of, of envelopes and they come in a variety of different um, designs. I've just got all sorts here, you know, old book pages, graph paper, ledger paper, all kinds of things. Um, and so that's what I want us to, to do this month. You can either, you know, do projects based on a recycled um, theme if you're not um, a hoarder. Um, but if you've got, you know, stash like I have, this this is just perfect. For anybody that um, is into digital art, again, this is really, really broad for you because um, you, you can base your pages um, on your digital art on recycled theme or even steampunk. Steampunk using nuts and bolts and screws and, you know, the kind of scrap that you'd find in, in your garage. So really try and think outside um, the box with this one. You know, all your napkins, your pretty napkins. It's j just a great prompt to be able to use that up. Now, as well as this hoard here, I have been um, collecting things like um, food packaging and the plastic packaging from my art supplies as well. And that's what I want to use today. So I'm going to clear this away and we'll make a start. Now, I started this project yesterday and I thought at first that it was a complete fail. And I came back about half an hour after I'd walked away trying to think what else I could do to find that it had worked after all. Um, what I was trying to do was do shrinky dinks. Um, using using packaging and um, I was trying to make some butterflies and I found that some plastic worked better than others and let me just um, show you this is off an embossing folder I'm just going to cut a small piece off here um, let me just leave that piece of parchment paper down um, this piece of plastic here is off a juice bottle um, just a carton of grapefruit juice and let me just heat it up because um, we're going to heat it later and you'll see what um, what happens let me do this one first and you'll see that this one curls up um, and shrinks away like like mad let me just get rid of that one a minute whereas this one here which is off my embossing folder shrinks slightly you can see it just shrinking slightly at the at the edges um, but doesn't shrink anywhere near as much and remains much much flatter um, and this is the one that I am going to use. So my advice to you is if you decide that you like what um, I'm about to do and you want to have a go at it yourself, cut a piece off your packaging first and just, just test it. Um, I've got some alternatives that you can use um, and you will be able to use the one that you saw curl, but you just have to be a little bit more careful um, about it. So let me just bring back my packaging. And as I say, I want to do some butterflies and I've dug out some of my butterfly stamps in three different sizes here um, and I'm going to ink my plastic using my stamp pad um, which I had a second ago and um, I seem to have misplaced here we go let's do this and I'm going to do this one in fact I'll do th this here is off um, a salad bowl so let's try this this one here because this one at the moment is nice and nice and flat so I'm going to use um, this so let me just ink up my um, ink pad. In fact, I'll do the small one first and then I'll go off camera um, and do, do the others. So I'm just inking up my stamp and then I'm just going to print onto the plastic. I'll do a couple of different sizes. I'll do a large one um, as well. Oh, whoops a daisy, if I can get it to stick, don't fall off on me. And it doesn't have to be a perfect image either. Let me ju just do this one down here. Let me just check that I'm in frame for you. 
and then we'll try where was that piece of plastic that I that other piece that I cut off where's it gone hang on let me find it here it is so I'm just going to ink my stamp up again and let's print another butterfly off onto here so we'll stick with them um, with those two and I'm just going to let them dry for a second and then I am going to fussy cut these out now be careful when you're cutting plastic because you know it does have a tendency to be quite quite sharp so I'm just going to go around the edge and you know I've left a, a nice wide border so that I can hold it like this it's nice and firm nice and stiff so as I say just really be careful um, about how you how you do this it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and I'm not going to bother cutting the antenna either. Let me just show you. I'm going to go around the head. I want the head. But I'm not bothered about the antenna. So here we go. I'm just going to continue to cut the rest of this out and then I'll be back. Now I've cut out my butterflies and you can see that some of the ink has smudged and that really doesn't matter because what you're going to do now is take um, a baby wipe, um, mine's just a slightly damp baby wipe, and just rub off any of the excess ink like this. If, some of it will come off um, and some of it won't. You see on this plastic here you can see it's sort of come off altogether and that's absolutely fine, you, do, you don't need it. Um, so let's just wipe, wipe this off. There we are. And just make sure I've got that on the right. Ah, there we go. I'd got it the wrong way round. It's going to come off both of them. There we are. <clears throat> and then you will need to grab some kind of permanent markers. I'm going to be using Sharpies, but any alcohol based markers will work absolutely fine for this. And right, so I'm going to start off with a with a, a pink, a cerise pink, and I'm just going to colour in my butterfly. And what I want to do is just try and get sort of relatively symmetrical. So we'll add some pink down here too. There we are. And you can use any colours you like for this. I shall do my usual thing um, and use colours that are near to each other on the on the colour wheel, um, just because I don't want to end up with anything anything muddy. Because you can see that it, it that the ink doesn't dry straight away, even though these are permanent um, markers. It um, stays wet on the plastic for quite quite a while. And then I'm going to let me just move those ones out of the way. And then I'm going to use this um, turquoise blue. So we'll just colour in here with this lovely turquoise. And because these two are colours that work quite well together, if I overlap the pink, I'm not going to end up with any mud. It'll just turn purple. So as I say, just, just be a bit careful about your choice of colour. There we are. And then I'm going to use a darker blue as well. There we are. I'm not bothering to colour in the body, as you'll see. There we are. And then I'm going to grab a black marker and I'm going to colour in the body in the black. You can spend more time um, doing this than, than I am here. There we are. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the other two. And as soon as I've done that, I shall be back. And 
so I've coloured my butterflies in and you can see the colours that I've used. I use the purple and lime green for this one here, pink, orange and yellow for this one and um, you saw me do this one in the, um, the magenta, the dark blue and the turquoise so I'll just move those out of the way and I'm just going to grab my heat tool and a pokey tool just to hold things down with as well. I'm sorry everyone, I'm having to do a voiceover over this part here because I realised when I was editing the video that I've got my heat tool in your, in your vision so you can't actually see what I'm doing. But I'm holding the heat tool to the butterfly. This is the piece of plastic that shriveled up into a ball and all I'm doing here is, is holding it to the butterfly, heating the butterfly until the wings start to curl and then I stop. If I carried on it would just curl into a ball in the same way that um, it did when I... Um, uh, showed you the test earlier but I just want to give a little bit of shape to those wings and heat set the colours as well this will heat set those um, colours of the sharpies that I added so that they become permanent this is the piece of plastic that stayed flat and this does actually shrink not by very much um, but it does shrink a little bit you can't see what I'm doing at the moment because the heat tool is in the way when I move it to the right hand side you'll be able to see better so the wings on the left are slightly smaller and you can see the wings on the right now shrinking just ever so slightly but again um, using the heat tool makes those sharpie markers permanent and also once I set this piece aside to dry it will become slightly thicker and harder um, and I can also manipulate it and just bend those wings and, and just give them some shape. And so I just put my butterfly to one side just to set and harden slightly and I do exactly the same thing with the smaller butterfly. Just heating it to set those Sharpie markers um, permanently so that the colours won't shift. And also it will, again, when I, when I set it to one side, will slightly thicken and harden that plastic. But also it, it, it'll make it easier for me, me to manipulate those wings and just give them a little bit of shape. And I'm just going to put that aside and, and leave it for a minute. So we've got this one here where the wings have curled and I just absolutely love that. And if we're careful, we can shape the body. Um, just so that we've given our butterfly a little bit of dimension. Just look at that, isn't that cool? Um, now bringing this one back, I'm going to grab one of my Sharpie markers and I'm just going to heat set this again, just, to, just slightly. And then very, very carefully then, whilst it's not too hot, I'm just going to shape the, the wings. And you might need to um, heat set it a couple of times. There we go. But look, I just absolutely love that. And again, we can you know, make this dimensional. I can put that down and just flatten that body out a little bit where I've managed to curl that too. Just try and flatten that a bit. There we go. Oh, now I'll flap my wings and just play um, around with it and you just get some really really cool effects just love that let's see what we can do with them um, with this one here so again just quickly shape that butterfly and then finally all I want to do now is just ink around the edges so I'm using my archival ink and my homemade dabber that you've seen me use during the last couple of videos and I'm just going to ink around the edges of, of my butterflies. So what a great use of food food packaging and um, you know your packaging from your art supplies. I just think these are absolutely gorgeous, and I'm going to show you a project in a minute where we'll um, we'll use them. So that's that one there. Um, I am going to do the others, and as soon as I've done that, I shall be back. 
So here's my pretty butterflies. I just love these. Um, so you can use the plastic that melts really quickly if you're very, very careful. Um, so, you know, try out your, your plastics. That's one, another one that I did yesterday. That was my very, in fact, no, this one here, that's the one I did earlier. This was my very first attempt yesterday, the one that I thought had, had failed. This one here was done on acetate, transparency film. Um, so if you're absolutely desperate to do it and you've got any transparency film, then that definitely works. It does melt um, slightly, um, but, uh, but not too much. So again, you can get some great results using transparency film as well. So have a play. I'm going to clear these away because what I want to do now is I want to work on these pieces here that I did. Oh, hang on, let me just move the camera up a little bit. There we go. These are the pages that I created with the felt tip pens. And um, I thought, you know, that the butterflies just look really, really pretty on, on those. I've also got some other ideas. So let me just go and grab some bits and bobs and I'll be back. Now I want to work on this piece first and I just want to add just a little bit more interest to that background. So I've got some white paint. Um, I've just got a piece of craft mat here, Teflon craft mat. And I want to add some bubble wrap. I'm going to try and use stamping materials this month from things that I've already got around the, ha the home like batteries and bubble wrap and you know the pencil the razor off the end of my pencil and that that kind of thing so I just want to add just a, a little bit here oh got um, a blob of something there we are just to add a little bit more detail to this to this page and I'm going to dry in between as well just so that I don't end up with a with a horrible mess um, first first of all what I shall do is add some um, circles with a couple of bottle bottle caps we go that will do and then I've got a piece of cardboard um, packaging as well so we can add some with that too there we go just a little bit not too too much I think that will that will do add another one there perhaps and maybe we can have one hanging off the edge and I'm going to give that a quick a quick dry and I've ended up using way way more paint on my craft mat than I wanted to so so that I don't waste it I'm just looking for um, a water spray bottle I'm just going to water some of that paint down and we'll add some splatters let's grab my paintbrush that's I don't think that's watery enough and grab a pencil and I'm just going to add a few splatters I'm not sure whether you'll pick this up because they're quite small splatters. That's quite subtle actually, I like that. There we go, I think that will do. A bit more there. See, this is my trouble, I never know when to, um, when to stop. And this time I want to work on this one and I've added some sky blue light. It's the Amsterdam, whoops Daisy, Amsterdam acrylic. I'm going to use the same piece of um, bubble wrap and I've got some white in this and that's fine. It really, really doesn't, doesn't matter. And again, let's just add. Now that's not showing up um, too well, but uh, there we go. Just a little bit of detail. There we are. Let's add some onto that purple there. Now I've given that a dry and I just really like the texture that I've got from adding adding that blue. This time I'm using this colour here. It's called purple, but um, you know, it looks more of sort of like a deep magenta to me. So I've put some of that on the craft mat. And I've still got some of the blue and the white on here, but I just want to add a little bit of detail. There we go, in a couple of places. There we are. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm being really quite subtle about this, or trying to be. 
and again we'll just add some circles we are. We can do the same thing with this lid here. There we go. And I think I'm going to leave it at, um, at that, she says as she goes and adds a, a couple more. And there we are. And then I've just added some water to that purple and I found my fan brush and I'm just going to give that a bit of a splatter. And I want to do the same thing with the white as well. I just put that to one side just in case I needed it later. So let's add a bit of that white and then leave that be before we over overdo it. This is going everywhere. So there's my backgrounds. They're all dry now and I'm really pleased with them with how they've they've turned out. And now it'll make sense to you why I used the magenta in the background of this piece here. These are the focal images that I want to use. These were sent to me in Happy Mail. I have a feeling that um, it was Maggie Lockley, Mags Lockley, who, who sent these to me. Maggie, if you watch this, let me know. Are these, these yours? I know that you sent me some, um, but I can't remember which ones um, were the ones that were sent by you I've received a, a few I've received this one here but you can see that that one is just just gets lost on that background whereas that one just really pops and um, as I say the reason I added that well I mean it says purple it's more of a, a magenta was to make this pink flower make make sense and of course I've got the orange here um, and I've already got the orange in the background so those were the other two I received um, I've got lots more of these as well let me show you um, these were all sent to me in my embellishment challenge. I've probably probably got more somewhere as well. I've got these gorgeous ones here. Um, Angie Beaumont, I think, made those. And I've got these ones here that Linda gave me for Christmas as well. Um, so I do, you know, want to try and use, use these gorgeous things um, up. So I'm going to put my backgrounds to one um, side for a minute. And let's do something with these. Um, I've grabbed a pit pen. This is the fine. And I think what I want to do is just add a little bit of doodling around the um, edge just to add some detail just with a really really fine pen let's just go around like like this you know wavy scribbly scribbly lines let's go over it a couple of times like this there we are just make it more sort of artistic there we are <coughs> And I think I want to add some embossing powder as well to the middle in a minute. Let me just do the same thing here. Oh, come on, pit pen, work. Hang on, let me just... It's not liking the acrylic, acrylic paint. Hang on a second, let's grab a different pen. Bear with me. Let's try this one here. This is a Wrightsall pen. This is also a fine one. That's better. In fact, I might go over the other one as well with this pen. That was working much better. And let me just do another another line of that as well. Make it more artsy. Here we go. We'll do, do this one again as well. That's better. And we'll do another layer of that thicker one there. There we are. Let's finish that one off. There we go. And what else do I want to do? I want to ink around the edges as well, just so that um, it stands out uh, um, against my busy background. I'm using a clean, fresh, fresher sponge this time because the other one has completely fallen apart, the one I was using earlier. So I'm going to go around both of these flowers. And then I think I am going to grab some embossing powder and we'll have a fiddle with the center of the flowers. So as soon as I've done this, um, we'll have a look at that. Now, let's add some um, embossing powder to the centre of this flower just to make it pop a bit more. I've got my Versamark embossing stamp pad here and I'm using one of these flat um, stencil brushes and I'm just going to tap on some of the Versamark ink like that. So let me just grab a piece of A4 paper as well, bear with me. And so I'm just going to sprinkle on my black embossing powder now like so, there we are, 
perfect, absolutely perfect. Let me just tip this back into the um, jar so that I don't waste it. Why do I always end up making a mess when I'm using embossing powder? Never mind, never mind. And then I'm just going to heat set that and watch because um, you'll see what a difference that, that makes. I just love that. Hasn't that made a difference? Look, there's the other one. So let's finish these two pages off. I've got my butterflies all lined up here and I just want to audition them on my page. Of course, I need the pink ones here. That's the one I did on the the, the plastic that sh really shrunk um, and I like how that looks. And that's the one that I did on the one that I had to bend with using my pen. And you know, I think I like that one there the best. So we'll go with that one. Um, and then we've got these butterflies here. I've got that one there um, that's managed to get splattered with some of the white ink, but um, the white paint, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. And then we've got that little one there as well. I think I prefer the smaller one. So that was the one that was made using um, a sheet of transparency acetate. So we'll go with those. Um, and then I've just got some Tim Holtz chit chat words as well. Let's have a look. I did find some words that would go really well with these pages. Um, let me just glue the butterflies down first. I'm using this Dovecraft glue here because um, it dries really, really quickly. So I'm just going to add a touch of that to the back. I'm just going to add it to the to the centre here. Oh, oh whoops a daisy. Why is that all, all lumpy? So we'll add that there, I think. So let's just plonk, plonk that down. Let's just try and position it into place like that. I want the wings um, dimensional like that. We'll do the same with this one, this one here. And you can see that I've heavily inked around the edges as well, just using my stays on ink pads. I think that the ink, you, you know, you, you get fed up probably of hearing me say this, but it really does make a difference and just make things stand out more. So let's add that there. Let's just stick it down. Right, they're glued down um, and this one here I am going to be using um, a quote from Small Talk, Tim Holt's Small Talk and it's with brave wings she flies. Um, do you know, I think I'm going to, do I want that there? Just, no, Do I, or do I want to cut it up? I think I want to cut it, um, bear with me. Oh. Let me just trim the ends off as well, just so that they're even on either end, even-ish anyway. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. So with brave wings, she flies. I think we all have that there, like that. I just really, really like that. Um, and I think what I want to do is just go round the edge. I used felt tip pen um, for the border on this one, but I think I just want to go round and just make it a bit more feathery just with my ink pad. Um, just to mimic what I've got um, on the feather on, on the feathers on the wings of the butterfly. So I'm going to go all the way around and then have a think about what quote I want on the other piece. So that's that one finished. I just um, think that border has just made all the difference. I love that. So one finished. Right, here we go. So we've got this one here. And I'm going to use the Tim Holtz Chit Chat words again. Is this um, small talk? And no journey is too great if you find what you seek. I think we'll have that there like that. Is that straight? These lift up pretty easily if I haven't quite got it. Got it straight. Adventure is worthwhile. 
So there we go. No journey is too great if you find what you seek. Adventure is worthwhile. And again, I think what I'm going to do is add a black border to that just to mimic what I've got going on around the butterfly wings, just to bring the black, because otherwise it just looks, you know, the, as if the black has no purpose at the moment. So let's have a look and see, see what that looks like. And yes, that's going to work. So as soon as I've done that, I'll be back. So that's those two done. Um, I'm obviously um, more of a straight line person because you can see here that I took <laughs> took the quote off and um, put it on straight. I just didn't like it wonky. So I'm going to work on the other two now with the with the flowers. So let's just finish these two pieces off. Um, I've added the embossing powder to the orange flower here and I decided to add a few more white splatters as well as the pink ones. So I'm happy with that. Now positioning wise, I've got my glue at the ready. I think that one needs to go in the center. This one to me just looks slightly better um, off to the, the left. I don't know why. I've tried it in the center and I don't know, it just to me it doesn't quite look right I think off to the off to the left so I'm going to add some glue and I'm just going to add the glue to the to the center um, I don't want these completely flat to the to the page oh so my flowers are glued down that glue is so quick to dry and I'm just going to turn this on its side and I'm going to use this right for all pen what make is it Stabilo um, just because my um, micron pen doesn't seem to want to work and I'm just going to add a scribbly stem like that. Um, let's add this one here as well. I just find it easier if I turn things sideways and I want this one to go sort of like that. There we are. And then I would need to add some leaves and I said that I would try and use homemade stamps and, and that kind of thing. I've got this stamp here. This is just handmade from two layers of kids fun foam and I don't know what colour leaves I want to add. Do I want two? I don't know. I'm going to add one on the left to start off with. I think I'm going to add it in white paint, you know, and then maybe um, add some scribbly lines around it when it's dry. Let me just bring, I'm going to have to go and um, scrape the paint off these because I've been in and out all day. I've allowed it to dry on there. Um, so, but if I, it, it'll scrape off really easily with a, with a spatula and then I can wash it under the tap so let's add some white white paint there we are and I just oh, be careful I don't drop it let's do this one here first I think I want that there so let's just press that down there we are and I think I'm going to add one on the other side as, as well so dip it in my paint I'll add that there like oh try not to get it sliding around all over the place there we are and then I can add some scribbly lines to that um, in a in a minute let me just see if I can put that on again press it down at this this end there we go that's better Let's do this one, this one here. I think I need a little bit more, more paint. Oh, come back, come back. Let me just um, spread it out with a spatula. I've got one here somewhere. There we go, that will do. So really make sure that's covered in paint. I'm going to start off on the right hand side this time, I think. Let's add that there. I have been worrying myself stupid over Louis all day today. He disappeared. Haven't seen him all day. Um, and it's probably, I don't know, quarter past six here in the evening and he's just, just returned. I haven't seen him since last night. Goodness knows where he's been. He's absolutely famished. Um, but I thought something had happened to him. I would be heartbroken if anything happened to Louis. Right, so I'm going to put these to one side to dry. I think I'm going to go over that one on the right-hand side again. 
there we are just so that it's a bit more opaque there we are um, and then when it's dry we'll add some scribbly scribbly lines and a border so let's just add some scribbly lines there we are do the same this side here too and really loose and scribbly about it there we are so that's that let's do the same with this one here move my heat tool out the way so I'm hitting my elbow I've really enjoyed making these today and it feels so good to use stuff that you've you've already got and especially you know bits and pieces of happy mail from other people too um, so thank you Maggie if it was indeed Maggie that gave me these flowers I think it was right okay and then last thing I just want my piece of sponge and my archival ink let's add a border so that's what it looks like at the moment and I just want you to see what a difference just adding a border and the reason I'm going for black is that um, it ties in the black that I've used for the outline of the flower and of course the um, stem I just think these look so much better with the border on. Um, I can't resist adding some words. I think I'm going to add Simply Beautiful to this one here. Um, so let's have Simply, let's just check that they're lined up before I press them down. Yep, I think I'm happy, happy with that. So Simply Beautiful for that one there. And then, let's have a look I did see something um, creative journey let's have creative journey on this one here where shall I put that and again I'm just using the Tim Holtz chit chat words um, I'm using the black again just to tie in the border and the black outline around the flowers and oops that's not straight oh come back come back oh come on Nina hang on there we go creative journey now it's the next day and I fiddled about with these just a little bit more so let me just show you what um, what we've made of course we've got the butterflies um, we've got three of those left over that we can use on another project um, let me show you these two first I added some colour to the leaves when I looked at it yesterday um, looking at the white it just I don't know just wasn't doing it for me I chose white because I didn't want to use green because it just would have clashed with the with the background but it just wasn't standing out enough so I just used felt it pens I scribbled some felt it pen um, onto a piece of um, craft mat and then I used a water brush just to blend the colour in and that just looks much more pleasing to my eye I've also um, moved the words as well just so that you know visually they're placed better and then I've added some black dilutions paint to the back of um, the pieces as well just to neaten things up I'd got a few splodges you know and splatters and that kind of thing I put my dilutions paint into the lid and then just used one of these with the tool the Tim Holtz tool it's by the sink I've washed up now um, just to spread the ink around and it just took one coat really easy dries really quickly and you know as you can see just goes on very very neatly so that's those and then finally um, these other two cards that we made here as well I just love those not done anything to these other than add black again to the back so that you know that they're, they're nice and neat so all I need to do now is just use a white gel pen just to sign these 
I have really enjoyed the start of this month's prompt, re recycle, repurpose and reuse and feel as if I've used a great assortment of recycled items as well, of course packaging to create my butterflies. The substrate I've used this week is picture framing mount board and it's just the centres that are left over when a picture framer has cut your, your frame for you. I picked these up from the scrap store um, but I bet you if you went to a picture framers that they'd sell you these, they might even give you them because you know they're pretty much surplus to requirements so that was recycled as well of course I've used bottle lids and homemade stamps and bubble wrap and that kind of thing to create all the texture on these two backgrounds um, and pieces of happy mail as well thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it this week so I look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret this prompt and look forward to seeing some of your digital um, artworks as well a great prompt um, you know if you're doing this digitally as well I can't say that word digitally Italy. <laughs> so I would really appreciate a thumbs up as always um, if you like this because it just lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and let me know what you think in the in the comments below I love to hear your your feedback and feel free to share this video um, you know on other social media with your friends Facebook Pinterest that kind of thing because that really helps me out too so take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now mm -hmm.